Reset Connection version 13 now includes the ability to define vertical diagonal brace extended shear tab connections both with and without the use of gusset plates. This connection type was highly requested by our users due to its usefulness in a variety of different situations. So in this particular project, I already have a vertical diagonal brace extended shear tab connection without a gusset plate defined. This connection is like a diagonal brace connection with one shear tab to connect the beam and brace or braces to the column. Both the extended shear tab connections for bracing are available according to the AIC code, both the 13th, 14th, and 15th editions. And so we can see a little bit more detail about this particular connection if I use the 2D view. And so in the 2D view here, we can see our brace connected to that single plate, as well as our beam connected to that single plate. Now in our def definition of properties here, we can see the general properties uh, as well as the beam properties and the brace properties. And so really the main portion of this is this definition of this plate section, right? That's gonna go ahead and connect the beam and uh, the, the angle here uh, for the brace. Now I can go ahead and add a different connection. So I'm gonna go to new and I'm scrolling down to our diagonal vertical brace section here. And so while I already have one of the connections without the gusset plate, where it's just, again, the, the shear plate here, I'm gonna go ahead and add one with the gusset plate. And so let's go ahead and open that connection. So now in this particular connection, again, let's go ahead and look at the 2D view. In the 2D view, we can see this maybe a little bit easier. Again, we can see the plate here. So that's that shame, same extended shear tab plate that we saw in the previous connection. But in this case, we're also connecting to a gusset. So in this case, maybe we wanna move the brace a little bit away from the column here and we want to utilize that gusset plate. And so with that, uh, we can look at some of the input options again. So we can go ahead and set where our braces are. In this particular case, let's say braces are both above and below our beam. We can also change the column orientation and basically whether we want to connect into the flange or the web of the column member. Our columns can be both wide flanges as well as HSS shapes, both pipes and tubes. Our beams, however, can only be our wide flange shapes. I'm gonna go ahead and let's uh, work through this connection a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and change uh, some of the loading here. So we have some shear loading already applied. We could add some beam axial loading. We have some column force additionally. I'm gonna go ahead though and focus mainly on our axial load and our braces. So I'm gonna change this to 70 kips top and bottom. So we have a 70 kip load, negative and positive top and bottom tension and compression. Now in the 2D view, that's probably the best way to go ahead, just like any connection and reset connection, it's the best way to go ahead and manipulate the connection uh, details. And so the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna actually increase the width of this plate. And so if I select the plate here and then expand the section here in uh, the components, I can go ahead and change this width from four inches to eight inches. Really the idea here is I wanna get a second row of bolts in on the gusset top and bottom and also in on the beam. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that second row of bolts. So on the beam connection, I'll expand beam bolts and I'm gonna go ahead and put in four bolts in two rows. Actually, let's go ahead and make this five bolts, excuse me, five bolts in two rows. And I'm gonna go ahead and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the edge distance here. So if I scroll out here, right, this distance from the beam or excuse me, the column to the first row of bolts here is that inch and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and make that three inches. The next thing I can do is I need to add a second row of bolts for both my top and bottom gusset. So let's go ahead and click on the first, the bottom gusset. And so I'm gonna go ahead and <clears throat> add two rolls of bolts here. And then the same thing at the top, we'll go ahead and add a second row of bolts here as well. And so now we've got a pretty good look at the connection itself. A connection assembly such as this uh, could be very useful in a situation where maybe there's fireproofing that's um, kind of in and around an existing column, and the shear tab would actually stick out beyond that fireproofing, and then the beam and gusset assembly could actually be brought in together, uh, maybe on a crane, and then everything could be attached in place there. So really, we'd be j just attaching this gusset assembly, beam assembly, gusset assembly directly to this plate that's already welded to our column flange here. Now, when we're going ahead and looking at the different results here, obviously we, we mess around a little bit with the um, inputs or uh, the properties dimensions. I can also go ahead and look at the reports. And so again, we have a summary of the report. 
that we're looking at. We can also see um, some of the uh, characteristics for why we're failing. So if we kind of scroll through here, no issues at the shear tab, no issues at the beam, no issues at the top gusset or the bottom gusset or the beam to gusset. And really where we're going to start to have uh, or run into our issues uh, are maybe at this bottom. We have one in here in this bottom brace, bottom gusset. So I can expand this and we're failing here in this gusset plate compression with this Whitmore section. So we're required to have 70 kips because that's what we have applied in that axial in that brace. And we only have 38.84 kips. And so if we look at that, maybe we want to go ahead and make some changes to uh, the gusset there. So if we look at this, um, you know, maybe we want to add a fourth bolt here to the brace. So let's go ahead and add a fourth bolt. We may also need to make some modifications to the work plate, lo plate location. Uh, we may also need to change the plate size here. So right now, here's our plate size. If I click on it here, that plate size is just under 22 inches. Let's go ahead and make that 24 inches so that fits a little bit better. Um, and then we might need to go ahead and manipulate, you know, the, the top plate a little bit. And so, again, we go back to looking at our reports, and we can look at our summary and see, okay, now we're failing the bottom gusset connection to the shear tab. So we've got some geometric restrictions here. So basically, we're just uh, failing. Maybe we'll change the thickness of our plate here to meet this max edge distance characteristic, or we might just be able to, um, you know, move around the size of the bolts here, or uh, excuse me, the spacing of the bolts here. Regardless, now we can go ahead and create a PDF. So we could go ahead and export um, our, a PDF or print the report that includes all the screenshots, includes all the limit states as well. Or we can go ahead and export our connection to a DXF file as well for any detailing. For more information about the vertical diagonal brace extended shear tab connections, as well as other connections and other new improvements in RISA Connection version 13, please visit our website, risa.com.